Hello there, I'm Juliana Michaels, and in this video, I've got something a little different. I'm sharing six ways to use the same three supplies, but I'm not doing it all by myself. I've joined up with the super sweet and talented Mary Polanco to share these six different options. I'm sharing three on my channel, and she is sharing the other three on hers. And while our styles are on opposite sides of the spectrum from each other, I'm more mixed media and she's more clean and simple, we thought it would be fun to bring our two worlds together and share with you how you can take the same exact supplies and use them in so many different ways, and it's a great way to stretch your stash. The supplies we're both using are from scrapbook.com, and they include the Butterflies One decorative die set, which is these three butterflies, and then the, out, the outline pieces, the Delicate Leaves, decorative die set and the little boxes stencil. Now, if you want to follow along, you can certainly use these exact same products, but I'm willing to bet you probably already have something very similar in your stash. So any sort of a small stencil, any type of leaf dies, and then any type of butterfly dies. Once you finish watching my video, Make sure you head over to Mary's channel to check out her video for three more ways to use these same supplies. You can find the link in the description box below. And while you're there, make sure to give her a follow if you aren't already. If you're interested in any of the supplies I used in this video, you can find a linked supply list in the description box below. When you shop through those links, you help me to continue to provide you with all the content I share. Now let's get on with the making. The supplies you're going to need to create the background for this card is some sort of mixed media paper, such as this one from scrapbook.com or Distress Watercolor cardstock, and just work on the smooth side. I'm going to be using some stamps, and the stamp sets that I'll be working with is this Floral Trims and Ledger Script from Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous. So just some sort of a floral stamp set and some sort of script stamp would work. I'm going to be working with this little boxes stencil from scrapbook.com. And then the ink I'm gonna be using is Lost Shadow Distress Oxide. And then you'll just need uh, some sort of a blending brush. The other thing I'm gonna be using uh, for the background are some stamp sets. These are from Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous. I've got the floral trims and ledger script. Um, so any kind of a floral stamp would work and any kind of a stamp that has any kind of a script or just a small um, print or something like that would work. And then I'm also going to be using the little boxes stencil from scrapbook.com. The ink I'm going to be using is Lost Shadow Distress Oxide. And then you're going to need a blending brush of some sort and then um, a distress sprayer. But this part is definitely optional if, if you um, want to skip that part. So I've gone ahead and selected one of the floral stamps and I've got it positioned over my watercolor paper. And the paper here is cut to four by five and a quarter inches so that it's, um, so that I can mat it later. Um, and then I'm just gonna stamp this image with the Lost Shadow Oxide ink. Just rubbing over that with my Stampendable stamping tool, which is just allows me to apply some even pressure without having to push with my fingers. And I think I'm gonna do one more inking of this. There we go. So now to add some of that uh, script stamp, and I'm going to just leave it here on my craft mat, and I'm gonna apply some ink here to the stamp and then I'm not going to press it down all the way flat I'm just going to kind of push like sections of it down so so I can kind of get like some text here and there on this on the image so I'm going to lay it down just gently then I'm only going to just kind of tap it down where I want some of the text to show up and I'm just gonna kinda go with whatever I get here. Lift it up and see what we got. There we go. All right, perfect. The ink is still wet because this is a, a 
uh, hybrid ink that's a combination of pigment and dye, so it takes a little bit longer to dry. So to speed up that process, you can use your um, heat tool if you like, or you can just set it to the side and let it dry. I've decided that I want to get a little bit more text like off of these edges here, so I'm going to just re-ink along the edge here and just kind of smush that down on there just to get a little bit there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. There we go. So now I'm going to add the stenciling and to help hold the stencil on paper in place, I'm gonna be using this silicone mat. And this just kind of has a, um, so like when you put your paper down on there, it's not sliding all over the place. And then this will kind of help hold that stencil down as well. Um, it's not super sticky, but it won't, it won't slide around super crazy. So if you want a little, you know, a little bit more reassurance in that it's going to stay in place, you know, you could use cement tape or washi tape to just kind of help hold that stencil down a little bit more if you want. And then I'm gonna use that same lost shadow and I'm just gonna rub my brush into the ink here and then I'm going to apply kind of off the stencil, off the paper, and then kind of just up into this corner here a little bit. And then same thing down here. And so the harder you push, the more ink you're gonna put down onto the paper, the lighter you go, the less ink. And this is a pretty light color anyway, so it takes quite a bit for it to even show up. So I just kinda of wanna get a light, kinda of partial stencil onto my background there, just for a little bit of interest. So there you can see how that looks with the stenciling added on. And then all you have to do to clean this is just, um, you can spritz it off and with some water, wipe it off with a paper towel or baby wipe, whatever, whatever you prefer. And then um, I just like to keep mine rolled up and back into the box so that um, I don't end up with it covered with a lot of Ziva hair. So, Cause that is very likely to happen in this house. To add a little more interest to the background of each card, I'm going to just do some ink blending with some Scorched Timber Distress Oxide in the blending brush. And I'm just applying the ink off my craft mat and then dragging that ink onto the edge of my paper with a circular motion. And by doing this, I'm not gonna get a real harsh, dark line. It's a little, little bit lighter color and coverage. And I can just kind of drag that excess ink onto the paper here and work my way around the edges. And there's a look at that. So to create the embellishments for this card, off camera, I die cut some distressed watercolor paper using this delicate leaves die set from scrapbook.com and then these butterfly dies from scrapbook.com. And I, so there's multiple different die sets on this one card. I just kind of have them all stored together because they're all butterflies. So, but I'm using this one here and that this one here in particular. You could certainly use any butterfly dies or leaves and or greenery type dies that you might have with these techniques. And I'm going to be using Distress Oxide inks for all of the techniques I'm going to share with you. Um, the colors that I'm working with are Bundled Sage, Forest Moss, Peeled Paint, Dusty Concord, and Spun Sugar. Feel free to use any inks that you want for this uh, color-wise, um, but the techniques are specifically using Distress Oxide inks. All right, so I've got one of each of the die cuts. And the technique for this first one, 
I'm going to be doing is just kind of a direct to paper ink technique. And to do that, you literally are just going to take your ink pad and just gently tap it down onto your die cut until you get the amount of coverage that you'd like. Now, I am not going for a solid coverage with this. I'm just wanting it to be kind of that kind of splotchy look. And I just think that just has a really cool effect and just gives it a little bit of a distressed look without a lot of work. Now, I will tell you if your ink pads are brand new and super juicy, you are going to um, get a lot more ink onto your die cuts than I am getting. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind. You may need to dab off some of the excess ink, which might seem wasteful, but um, you can't always re-ink them. Um, so that's just an option. Or you can just try, you know, practice with how much pressure, because I'm not really pushing very hard at all when I am applying the ink. And then this ink again, like as I said earlier, is an oxide ink, which is a mix of a pigment and dye. So it's a slow drying ink. So you can set these to the side to dry or you can use your heat tool to help speed up that drying process. And then I'm just gonna repeat that process of the, the inking with um, each one of these other die cuts. So again, just kind of lightly pouncing that down. You know, you might need to kind of tilt it just to get a little bit of the corner down on there better if you need to. I would just practice this a little bit with, with your inks and see how you like the effect. Um, and then, you know, figure out how juicy your ink pads are or are not. Um, I pulled out a color when I was playing around with this idea that I don't use very often and it, um, you know, colored it in pretty solid um, the first time I tapped it down. So, um, slightly dry ink pads. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me, but I don't re-ink very often, so that's probably why. And there is a look at the direct to paper ink technique. For the second technique, once again, we're gonna use the Distress Oxide inks. I'm sticking with the same colors just so you can really see the difference with each technique. And I feel like using that same color kind of helps you um, be able to see the difference with each of the techniques. So for this one, this technique, we're going to do an ink smushing technique. So to do that, you're going to apply some of the ink to your craft mat. I prefer to work with these mats that kind of have a little bit of a texture. This is the one that comes with the travel mat or the glass mat from Tim Holtz um, by, and Tonic Studios. And I'm just gonna, I just spritz that ink with some water using my distress sprayer. And then you're gonna take your die cut and just smush it into the ink. And there you go. And then and use your heat tool to dry the ink. Or you can set it to the side to dry, whichever you prefer. And so there is a look at the dried die cut. And if you wanted, you could, you know, a little more interest, you could tap it back down in there and get some more little droplets and then dry it again. And you can see here how um, smooshing it that second time to add a, another layer of ink really added some interest to the die cut. And so now I'm just gonna repeat that process with these other die cuts.
And I didn't mention, um, for this technique, you definitely, I would definitely recommend using watercolor paper. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to probably hold up well with the addition of the water for this technique. And here is a look at the ink smush die cuts. Now for this last technique, you might be thinking, okay, with these previous uh, two techniques, the color is really soft, very light, um, kind of a delicate, maybe you want a little more color than uh, what these two techniques provide. So to do that, we're gonna do just an ink blending technique. And to do that, I you've got a couple options. You can save the paper, like the negative piece that your die cut came from. And then you can just pop that back, back in place. And then you can flip that over and add just like a piece of mint tape to kind of help hold it in place. And then you can use a blending brush to apply the ink. And you're just gonna rub it onto your ink pad and then lightly rub over your die cut to apply the ink. Another option you could do would be to ink up your paper before and then, then die cut it. So that's a couple, another option you have. And then, you know, you can kind of get some darkness on there by just continuing to layer it. Um, if you do some tapping like that, you can also get a little bit darker coverage as well. And so then that's, That's what that one would look like. And then you can just repeat that process with each of the other die cuts. Now, if you have one that's really delicate like this one here, you might want to just kind of hold it just to be safe and then kind of pull away from where your finger is so that you don't tear it. Thing you could do to add a little bit of interest to these would be to spritz them with a little bit of water. So, um, you know, you could just do this push, pull the trigger slowly so you get a little bit larger droplets and then dab those dry with um, a paper towel, clean paper towel, clean-ish, I guess you'd say. <laughs> and then so just dab off. You'll see that kind of activates that ink and lifts off some of it. So you just wanna make sure when you switch to a different color, just kind of go to a clean section on the towel. And there's a look at the effect you achieve there. And so for this technique, if you don't want to add the water splatters, you could use just regular uh, 
smooth white card stock. If you do want to add the water splatters, I would again recommend using a watercolor paper. And then if you want to, even though you've dab dabbed up that water, these might still be just a little bit damp, so you can speed up that drying process with your heat tool if you like. To adhere my die cuts to my card, what I start off with is I've kind of made a little arrangement. I'm going to use my reverse grip tweezers here to help pick them up, and then I can place them onto my background. But before I do that, I'm going to use some adhesive and glue these die cuts together. And then once you get all your adhesive on, you can just put a, a stamping block on top there just to weight it down a little bit and let it completely dry. While I was working on this video, this arrived. This is a kitchen trivet, like hot pad, to help protect your um, tabletop, or you can use it to like, you know, grab hot a pan. And anyway, Mary, had used one of these in one of her videos when she was doing some heat and heating and drying and heat embossing and stuff and i thought hmm that's a great idea so when i'm normally crafting i really prefer to use my glass mat however for my videos i use this um, self-healing mat so that you don't have any glare and the problem with it though is when i need to do any kind of heating drying heat embossing the self-healing mat um, can't take too much heat. It can take a little bit, but not a lot. And so when I saw Mary use this trivet in one of her videos, I thought, oh, that's a great idea. So I had to um, get some for myself. So uh, yeah, so now I can, you know, leave them flat. I don't have to worry about, I don't always have to pick it up with a tool. Um, or worry about my hands getting too hot and then I can just dry it on the silicone here and my surface is protected and we're good to go. Yeah, because like with that heat, like the surface here is warm, but this is not. And so, yeah, perfect. Thank you, Mary. To create the background for each of the cards, I used the same three techniques that I used on the die cuts. So I made one background where I uh, applied the ink pad directly to the paper. I did the ink smushing on one, and then the last one here is just the ink blending. And then the last thing to do is just to assemble the cards. Thanks so much for watching. I'm so grateful for you. I was wondering if you could do me a quick favor and subscribe to my channel or leave me a thumbs up or a comment. If you're feeling extra generous, I'd love for you to share about my channel with your friends. All of these things help out us YouTubers so much and it would mean so much to me to have your support.